I got involved with NASA um, a few years ago and ended up in a frantic rush having to develop this. This is what's called a hydrogen fire detecting camera. Uh, there is a window in the front here which goes to a visible television camera. There's a window underneath here which goes to an infrared camera. All the optics is tuned to pick up that 8 to 14 micron band plus a little bit more from the other side. When I um, went to NASA to answer their query, could we do something in the ultraviolet band to see um, hydrogen fires, this was 1988, uh, uh, I spent a fruitless day trying to see a hydrogen fire with ultraviolet, which you can do. I did see it, but you could see all the background because Florida sunshine is full of ultraviolet. Um, and at the very end of the day, they were very disappointed. And I said, well, let's try this. So I had one of those things with me. I took it out of the case. I, sh I switched it on. And wow, we, had, we saw hydrogen and we were moving the gas flame farther and farther away. 20 people arrived out of the blue. And within about a week, we had a contract to develop this super quick, to be in time for the relaunch of the space shuttle in, uh, into after the big accident that they had had. And this is configured in this most peculiar uh, housing, because this had to be on the launch pad. There were five of these going up the launch pad. I've been to the top of the, the shuttle launch pad with them. Uh, and they were monitoring important points on, on the shuttle. And one, well, two were looking up into the engine bay. These had to be designed to withstand the launch of the shuttle at a range of about 20 metres distance. You can imagine what you, how you have to build something to do that. This nearly put me in the ground doing this in a frantic rush. It took six months to do it and five, six of them were delivered and we were, and they all worked for the return. I went over there for the actual um, uh, relaunch of it and it all had to configure to work in with, with their uh, system as well. Um, very nicely, about two years ago, uh, I found that on eBay. <laughs> because of course it was superseded with other items and a guy who dealt with liquidated stock or something in, in Orlando popped up on an internet saying, I've got this thing, what is it? And I was the only person who knew what it was. So, And he gave it me once he knew I was the designer of it. So it's come back home. Um, and uh, it's a very precious bit of kit, that is. Um, and I will show you what the picture is that it gave out. And it still will do. They have cameras made by other companies now, but we were the pioneers of it. We also did the... Um, the Delta rocket launch pad as well. Uh, that's it there, and on the inside of it there you can see how, how the theory was. By the way, this is an interesting bit of science. We saw the we saw the big picture, but we had to go and reverse engineer the science to understand why it worked. And I wrote a paper on this, which I gave at a conference in, in Orlando, which explains exactly how we went and measured the spectrum that comes from a hydrogen uh, fire on it. I have the paper on that here. Yes, that's it. Um, but you can see there, the visible picture, no fire. You notice Malvern Hills in the background here. And that's what superimposing the thermal image did for you, right down to very small sizes of, of, uh, of flame. Uh, if they saw this happen on the shuttle, it meant they were going to abort. And I did feel rather horrendously responsible <laughs> for about five or six years. They bought another set of kit for it as well. Uh, the engine test people, Morton Fire, not Morton Fire, called Stenish Space Flight Centre, bought it as well. Tried to sell it to the Russians, but they had no money. 